Oh my god. In that time, only men were allowed to eat artichokes. Literally, women weren't allowed to eat artichokes because. Yay, yay, yay. We, as human beings, need food to live, and we eat food constantly. Most of us, at least once a day, unless you're on some crazy diet or something. Have you ever sat down to eat one of your favorite foods and genuinely thought about where that food came from or, you know, how it ended up onto your plate or even how it ended up existing in the first place? I think about that stuff all the time and if you do too, you're in the right place. Today, we're going to talk about the artichoke. I want to start a series where I talk about different foods from all over the world and I can learn about new foods and try new things and also learn about where they come from and like the culture surrounding them. So I've eaten artichokes throughout my childhood and a lot of people don't know too much about them and I'd love to share everything that I've learned with you today. So I'm gonna go through a couple different topics. First is gonna be what the heck an artichoke is. The next is gonna be, I'm gonna go into the history of the artichoke, where it originated from, when it was first, you know, talked about discovered a couple of myths surrounding the artichoke. There's a lot of Greek mythology surrounding the artichoke, which is super interesting. Uh, so I have a couple stories for that. And then I'm gonna go through when you're going to get an artichoke yourself from your grocery store or the market or wherever you're gonna get it from. What you wanna look for at the grocery store, how they look, what they're gonna taste like, different ways to eat it. Today I'm gonna be steaming it for you and dipping it in a sauce of choice. I'll show you the sauce that I use and what sauces other people use because I feel like, yeah, without the sauce, what's the point? So, yeah, I mean, like, it's it just tastes like a vegetable without the sauce, you know what I mean? Like, that's kind of, that's the part of the dish that makes it, like, steps it out to the next level. So, whichever of those topics that you want to listen to, you can skip around if you want to. I'll put the timestamps down in the description if you are here for a specific one of those purposes. But if you just want to learn about the artichoke, come along on this journey with me. I'm gonna spill some facts and we're gonna learn together. I just learned all of this, like this week I've been doing some research. So I got a full sheet of info <laughs> to give to you. The artichoke is a perennial plant and it's a part of the thistle species in the sunflower family. I think I'm getting those two terms correct. I know that's pretty specific, but I'm pretty sure it's the sunflower family and the thistle species. And with artichokes, when we eat them, we're eating the flower bud. And so they start at the size of a pea and they start to grow on the artichoke stalk, which can, which I think is called a shoot. The shoot can get up to four feet tall, I'm pretty sure, is what I've, is what my research says. I'll link down below all of the websites where I've gotten all of this information from. All my credit goes down there. So as the artichoke grows, it gets up to its tallest point. What we eat is the flower bud that's on the inside. And if you don't harvest them properly or on time, the artichoke blossoms into like a big cluster of vibrant purple flowers which is so absolutely gorgeous and I want an artichoke farm where half of them I get to eat and then the other half is just <laughs> is just the flowers because they're so delicious and they're so beautiful too which is cool which is like so cool that they can be both at the same time get you a vegetable that's delicious and beautiful they're full they're round they're green they have little thorns at the end of the leaves but you can get them thornless which i found out which is very interesting since doing this research i've always grown up with artichokes and we never took the thorns off we just had like you just and it's not that spiky and if you know that the spike is there you don't just don't pinch it that hard or like grab next to it instead of on the thorn, I don't know. But the thornless ones have less flavor and less meat, which is proven by my research. So I say keep the thorns on there. The artichoke is, as I said, it's a perennial, so it grows year round. Prime season is gonna be springtime, so like March, April, May, but you can get them year round. They have a bunch of distinct layers with the outside being the most uh, coarse, I guess, and stiff. And then as you get further in, it gets a lot softer. The leaves get softer and thinner and smaller and closer together. And then you get to the fluff that covers the heart and you scrape the fluff off and you get to the heart on the bottom. And I'll show you guys how to how to eat an artichoke, how to make, how to cook it, how to do that whole thing. So at 
the end of the video. Each artichoke is gonna be about 60 calories. It has about a fourth of your daily fiber intake, which is pretty cool, so they're very high in fiber. They're known to have a lot of vitamin C, magnesium, and a bunch of antioxidants, and arguably, it is the highest in antioxidants of any other fresh vegetable, which is pretty cool. Everything I'm just saying is pretty cool. There's, I don't know what else to say about it. Pretty cool. <laughs> it also is known to reduce cholesterol and improve liver function. The globe artichoke is the artichoke that we know best here in the United States. It's also called the French or the green artichoke. There are more than 140 varieties of artichokes, but only 40 are grown commercially, which is kind of crazy. I don't know necessarily the distinct differences. I know that when you go to the store, sometimes you can get like the ones with purple leaves and sometimes just the green leaf ones. I don't know. All right, now we're gonna get into the history, now that we know what the artichoke is. They originated mainly in the Mediterranean area and a little bit into Northern Africa, where today's Algeria is, kind of in that area, and also in Southern Europe, which is the Mediterranean area. The Romans were the ones who made it extremely valuable and the rich would eat them throughout the year. They would preserve them with fresh vinegar, wine, and cumin which is very interesting. Cumin is known to be used with it a lot throughout my research. So that's actually, that's, sounds like it go deliciously with an artichoke. So after the Roman Empire, they disappeared and reappeared and they were kind of coming in and out of popularity and commercial growth. And the French and Spanish conquerors were credited to being the ones to spread the artichoke love over to the United States and to all countries in the world. Today it's all continents have artichokes. I'm assuming not Antarctica when they say that, but I think that's pretty cool. Oh my god, I need to stop saying that. I think it's cool. I just think it's cool. <laughs> think of something else. Uh, okay, this is the Greek mythology story that I really wanted to talk about when I found this. And there's one other part of the history that I'm like, that blows my mind. <coughs> Zeus was visiting Poseidon one day, and on his way as he was exiting Poseidon's ocean, he noticed a, f a young woman who he thought was attractive, and he went, spoke to her, and he made her a goddess so that she would be closer to where he was living in Olympia, or in Olympus. I wrote online, it said Olympia, but isn't it Olympus? I don't wanna sound dumb. I'm gonna put the answer. I'll figure it out as I'm editing this. Go, Tessa, go find out. So she agreed, and she uh, went to go live in Olympia. But while she was while she was there, she was waiting for a long time because Zeus had Hera in the house, and Zeus was waiting for Hera to leave to go travel or something, so that they could have alone time. And. Hera wouldn't leave. She was just waiting. And as the girl was waiting, she got homesick for her mother. So she went back home to the to the mortal world and went to visit and came back. She snuck away so Zeus didn't know. And when she came back, he was like, he got super mad and punished her. So as a punishment, Zeus hurled her back onto earth and turned her into the plant that we know today as the artichoke. And so by Greek mythology, that is how we have the artichoke today. <laughs> if you're wondering, that's how it started. It's been mentioned in writings that it was present during the time of Christ, but the first time that it was mentioned was like 300 and something BC. I think it was, uh, I wrote 350 BC and it was in Italy. It was by a Greek philosopher. Ancient Greeks and ancient Romans thought of the artichoke to be an aphrodisiac and a delicacy as well. It was very, it was held very highly in status. In ancient Greece, it was thought to, to guarantee the birth of boys, which I don't know, I didn't go too much into depth and in research on this. I don't know if that means like you get pregnant and then you eat artichoke throughout your whole pregnancy and then it'll be a boy. I'm assuming, I'm assuming that's kind of the thought, but. That's very interesting. So we get our word for artichoke. So Sinara was the name of the, the Greek woman who was turned into the artichoke and that's one of the scientific names for it. It's a 
Sinara Cardunculus. And we get our artichoke word from an Arab word. I don't know how to pronounce it, but Al Karshuf, Karshuf. I'll write it down on the screen, but there was an Arab group at the time who identified with the artichokes in Sicily. So that's thought to be the reason why we get our artichoke word from them instead of from Sinara, which is the Latin one. So um, in the human timeline, is somewhere between 800 and 1500, it became kind of the plant that we know today. It hasn't changed too much since then. Uh, this is, oh my God, this is another fact that as soon as I read this, I was blown away and I was really excited that I researched this in the first place. So in the 16th century, there was a girl named Catherine de Medici and she was married to King Henry II at 14 years old. Thank God we don't have to make those decisions like that anymore that early. Like, that's so insane. Imagine being a queen at 14. That's kind of crazy. She was actually credited for making artichokes famous because at the time it was kind of looked down upon to... Here, I'll just go into it. So she was credited to bringing the artichokes to France. She was one of the biggest artichoke advocates. And the reason for that being is because, oh my God, in that time, only men were allowed to eat artichokes. Literally, women weren't allowed to eat artichokes because it was thought to be an aphrodisiac and it, to enhance sexual power. So women weren't allowed to eat them. So this lady, Catherine de Medici, <laughs> spoke about these artichokes and she said, if one of us had eaten artichokes, we would have been pointed out on the street. Today, young women are more forward than pages at the court. That's pretty cool. She was being like, I'm a woman. I'm going to eat this artichoke and all of you can fuck off. <laughs> and that's so cool because that's so dumb. Why can't the ladies eat the artichokes? It was also at some period in time, it was really looked down upon to eat artichokes. And then at another time, it was like only rich people ate artichokes. So it was kind of an up and down thing. But I think at, at this time, it, they were just kind of like whatever. But since there was such an ass an aphrodisiac, or thought to be, a woman can, wow, that's just so weird to me, like, says who? That just, uh, the thought that that was allowed to happen, or that, oh my god, that's a conversation for another day. <laughs> so the French, like I, I think I said before, that the French were credited to bringing them to the US. They first started in the Louisiana Territory and then they mysteriously disappeared and then they reappeared because uh, some French colonists set it up again. And then the Spanish brought artichokes to California in the later 1800s where the French brought them in the early 1800s, like 1806, I think. So yeah, the Spanish brought them to the West Coast and the French brought them to the East Coast pretty much of the United States. I don't, I should have gotten a year on this. I, I don't even, I don't even know where this fact came from, but I wrote that this guy Johann Wolfgang Goeth, a poet and a dramatist, shunned the artichoke by, and he, one of his quotes is, the peasants eat thistles. So it was a very like shunned food. Like it was, I think it was controversial to even eat, eat them at all, which is just so interesting. I don't really know. I don't really know why. There's still so much more to learn about the artichoke. And this one is super cool too. Marilyn Monroe was the first artichoke queen, which I didn't know that even existed. I don't really know. I'm assuming it's like a, an artichoke advocate. I'll find out when I'm researching pictures probably, but still this was in 1949. She was the first artichoke queen which is pretty cool. What if I could be artichoke queen someday? <laughs> I need to write that, write that on my wall and manifest it. I'm gonna be the next artichoke queen and nobody can stop me. Ugh. Ocean Mist Farms is said to be, oh, sorry, I was just yawned. Ocean Mist Farms is said to be the largest artichoke producer in the US. I'm pretty sure that's in, uh, in California, but in the world, Italy is supposed to be the country who produces the most worldwide. In Monterey County in California, there's a place called Castroville and they claim to be the artichoke center of the world. And every year they have an artichoke festival, which I think is super cool. What if I could go to the artichoke festival as like a part two of this video? That would be so cool. If you want me to go to the artichoke festival, Comment down below if you want me to see that. So now that you know all about the artichoke, let's 
go eat one. <laughs> I'm gonna show you how to steam your own artichoke at home today. So when you're looking for an artichoke at the store, what you're gonna look for is definitely roundness, leaves that are tightly closed into the center and make a squeaky noise when you're pulling them apart. In the winter time, you might see some blistering, which is normal for that season, but you're obviously just gonna to wanna to look for the one with the least amount of blistering. And in the springtime, they should be full and round, bright green, not super bright, but like dark, not too dark and not too bright. You're gonna want it to be like right in the middle. You want it to feel a little bit heavy for its size and you don't want there to be any drying. You wanna make sure that it looks like all of its moisture is pretty well retained. So when you get it home, you're gonna wanna rinse it off. So you can either get one of those, like, it's like a little metal thing that goes like this and then you open it and you can put it in the pan to steam things. I'll find a picture of it so you know what I'm talking about. You can either get one of those things or you can get something like what I have where the pan itself has like holes in it so you steam it in the other pan, which is what I'm gonna do today. So either way, no matter, depending on what you're using, either way you're gonna wanna fill the water up until it's almost touching the bottom, but not quite. Definitely salt the water. Don't forget to salt the water. It's gonna make the artichoke taste a lot better at the end. The salted water that you've just poured into your pan you're gonna wanna put that on the stove and get that boiling. Once that's boiling, put your artichoke in there in the steamer and with the lid on it, turn the heat down to, I don't know, low heat to like medium. I would say like keep the water boiling, but like a little more than a simmer, you know? And you're gonna wanna steam that for an hour. So at this point, you're gonna, you can just hang out, do your thing, and you could start making your sauce. Maybe wait a little bit towards the end to make your sauce so it's fresh and not sitting there for an hour. Some of the most popular sauces to make are melted butter is a super easy one. Just put a little, put a little bit of butter in an oven safe tray and heat it up in a little toaster oven. Or if you have a microwave, you can do it that way as well. Or you can make an aioli, which is super popular. The aioli that we, usually make, or we as in me and my family growing up, is just you just getting some sort of seasoning salt for steak seasoning, and you pour a bunch of that into mayonnaise. If you don't know what an aioli is, it's mayonnaise mixed with whatever the heck you want. So you literally just mix whatever seasoning you want. You can do like onion and garlic powder and cumin and lemon is super popular even if you wanted to go uh, like a really healthy route you could do like oil and vinegar or you could do lemon juice totally up to you the, uh, you can even eat it plain and it'll taste delicious or with a little salt and pepper you can kind of eat it any way that you want so when everything's all done steaming you're gonna want to take it out of the heat very carefully probably with some some pinchers it's gonna be hot well at first to let it cool off put your fingers like into the the thistles in the center be very careful because it's gonna be really hot as you open it and there's also thorns so don't like poke yourself sometimes it's good to just do it with like two forks or like utensils but I usually just <laughs> put it in my hands but spread the leaves apart a little bit to let some of the heat from the inside come out and to loosen the leaves so it's easier for you to grab when you're eating it you just individually pluck each leaf as you're eating it so you pluck the artichoke leaf dip it in your dipping sauce of choice and you lightly scrape the leaf between your teeth and just in the bottom section not this not the half with the thorn on it but the the section with the meat on it you scrape your teeth lightly along the bottom and all of the meat quote unquote should slip into your mouth <laughs> nice and smoothly <laughs> no for real though it's so delicious it should if it's steamed all the way it should fall right off the leaf it shouldn't be too hard the outer leaves sometimes are a little bit rough to get to get everything off but that's normal yeah and you just keep plucking and scraping it along your teeth dip it into whatever dipping sauce you'd like and until you get to the bottom you're gonna get to what I call the fluff I'm assuming everyone's gonna call that the fluff I don't know what else you'd call it but once you get there, you're gonna wanna scrape that part off with a spoon, or I guess you could just, you could carve it off with a knife or however you wanna get it off, and then cut off the bottom as well. And then once you have all the fluff scraped off and the bottom of the artichoke cut off, you'll be left with a disc of just the center of the artichoke, which is called the artichoke heart. This is the best part. Me and my family members would fight over this part. We would like split it all into little pieces. And oh my gosh, if you were in the bathroom or if somebody missed the artichoke heart, it was, it was devastating. Or if there wasn't enough for everybody, it was a huge, 
thing. This is the best part by far. It's just a big chunk of all of that stuff that you've been scraping the whole time. It's delicious. I love also that it's such a social food. I think that's why I like it so much because it's an, it's active and you like sharing it with people is so much fun. I don't know, I like food that's delicious and it's also fun and it's interactive and you can like, I don't know. It brings people together and I love that. I think that's it. I hope you've learned everything that you wanted to know about artichokes. If you have any more facts or anything that you know about artichokes or ways that you like to eat it, comment down below. I know people like to eat them pickled and stuff like that. I don't really, I'm not a huge pickled artichoke fan. I like pickles and I like pickled things, but I like fresh steamed artichoke a little better than pickled. Let me know if you liked this video. If you want to see more content like this, please subscribe to my channel. Like this video, share it with your friends if you enjoyed. Please also, yeah, just comment down below your thoughts and if you have any more questions or what other foods that I should do in the future because I want to do, I definitely want to continue doing this because I like this is something that I personally enjoy like learning about all the foods that I like to eat and being able to learn like this super cool information and to be able to share it and I don't know I just really enjoy it a lot so let me know if you enjoy it too I try to post videos as often as I can <laughs> I'll get you a video at least once a month. I'll tell you that. I'll get you one at least once a month. I would love to do two a month, so one every two weeks I've been trying to do. It's just, I've been, I don't know, we've been working on it. So if you have any suggestions for things that you would like to see, please do let me know. I definitely will do them. I answer comments daily and I think I said this in my last video, but I surpassed 400 subscribers. I'm so excited about that. Oh my God, I've been on YouTube for so long, but I'm pretty inconsistent. <laughs> So, and a lot of it, yeah, I don't know. I just, appre I appreciate the support a lot and I'm obviously just doing it for fun. I don't have any other reason to be doing it at the moment that I enjoy it and that I would love to pursue something with it in the future. And if you want to support me in that, subscribe, like my channel, comment, check out my social medias and yeah, I'll see you guys within the next week or so for another video. I hope you have a great holiday season. Try sharing an artichoke with your friends or maybe even trying a new artichoke recipe now that you know what it is. And you can share some of these cool facts with your family. Let me know which one you thought was the coolest. Thank you guys so much. I'll talk to you later. Bye.